who were the first people who knew about the birth of our Lord Jesus Christ? The shepherds. The shepherds. The shepherds, they were the first that announced. The angels came to them. Now, why? Why the shepherds? Why not the king of Israel? Why not uh, um, Herod? Why not Pilate? Why not um, the leaders? Because he doesn't give the wisdom to them. He gives it to the poor. Gives it to the simple, humble. The simple. Right. Yes. Okay, yeah. And, and that's pretty much what I'm going to be talking about. I'm going to put this in, in, in our perspective. What does that mean for us? Because we are his sheep. But also we are called to have a pastoral role. The pastor, priest, has a pastoral role over the church. Parents have a pastoral role over the family. Teachers have a pastoral role over the student body. We all are pastors, if you will. And um, as you look at scripture, God basically told Moses when he received the Ten Commandments and all the law, and basically he wrote all the law in three books, uh, Numbers, Deuteronomy, and, um, and Leviticus. When, when he was writing the law, I always said that Moses was the first technician. <laughs> he, read, he received the law from the sky, from the cloud, and put it on a tablet. Right? So, um, but he also received a lot, a lot. But one instruction that I think is significant for this talk is that God warned him, don't let the people pick a king. Because a king will drive you crazy with taxes. The king will recruit your men for the military. The king will always be looking to expand the kingdom in a materialistic way. And most kings don't really care about the people. And I, I, I'm going to tell you, quite frank, I don't care what they talk about the United States. But there's no change from them to them. I mean, our presidents, yes, do things for the people. But I'm sure that in here, and maybe even in here, they do things in for the people so that they look good. So that they can still continue to be richer and richer. God wants simple people. And that's why he went to tell, through the angel, he went to tell the shepherds of Bethlehem that in, in, um, in the city of um, Galilee, Bethlehem, a king was born. A true king. Now, let's start a little bit with, um, with Samuel. Samuel was told by God to go pick a king because the people have wanted a king. And Samuel knew God didn't want them to have a king. So Samuel was upset. He was angry and God said, it's not with you. You're not doing the bad job. They just don't want, they're, they're, they're fighting because they don't want me to be the king. So give them a king. They want a king, give them a king. And they, the first king that they picked, Saul, didn't cut it. He was not a good king. He was even on the crazy side. And some people say he was kind of manic depressive. <laughs> but, but he was not a good king. And then God told Samuel, go to Jesse's home and you will anoint the king there. And he went. And he told he, he went. He filled his oil, his horn with oil. They didn't have bottles at the time. They had oil, uh, um, horns. They put a little cover on the big end, and they put a little cover on the top, lower end. They would pour oil, and that oil go you're going to use to anoint one of Jesse's kids to be the next king. So he, he took his animals to, to, for the sacrifice. He told Jesse, "We're going to do a sacrifice. We're going to anoint a king in this household." And Jesse like an average human being, the first thing he did was to bring the firstborn, the strongest, the smartest, allegedly, and here you go, here's my best son. And Samuel said, 
He's not the one that God wants. Because he follows God's instructions. Mm -hmm. uh, okay, how about the second best thing? How about the third best? You're pushing it. I got the fourth for you. I kept <laughs> on until he got all the children that were there. And, and Samuel said, you have to have another kid. Because God wants one of your kids, and he doesn't want these that are here. I got a little shepherd. He's, he's good for nothing. He just knows how to deal with land. It's cheap. He's good. And he's easy. I, I don't know if the English version says it, the Spanish version says he's even blonde. He's good looking. You know, he's not rough. He's not tough. Yet, he was good with the sling, and he could protect from any wild animal all his sheep. Brought him in, and that's who you want. That's the one that would annoy them. He annoyed them, and they could have their sacrifice, and they could have their meal. I can imagine that by the fourth kid, he's I'm starving to death, man. Big one, big one. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, man. Um, so David uh, is anointed the king of Israel. And the first battle he went to was against Goliath. <laughs> and, 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 and Saul, the big guy, you know, strong, with the image of the, the mankind wanted, said, you can use my armor, my sword, and my shield. And it was too big for King David. <laughs> I can't carry this. I can't even walk. <laughs> I'm like, I got a slingshot. Don't worry. That guy's big. I got a slingshot. And he picked, you know, he picked five rocks, put it in a little bag. Why did he pick five? It is understood that Goliath had four brothers. <laughs> Oh, oh. Okay. so he said, "Okay, if I kick, if I knock <laughs> this one down, maybe one of the brothers will come out." <laughs> and, they, and they were big; they were just like Goliath. Mm -hmm. So he had one for every brother. His faith was so strong that God would protect him. He had one for Goliath, and once he knocked down Goliath, everybody scattered. Well, this guy's good. This guy's good. And he cut the head of Goliath, and you know, you know the story. Mm -hmm. He didn't need a soldier's armor. He just needed his faith. The battle is the Lord. <coughs> and he, right here in the forehead, man. boom, knocked him down. I can imagine when he fell down, boom, 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 they trembled. So God picked a shepherd, but God had to allow that shepherd to get the respect. Then when they came back home, everybody started singing. Uh, Saul killed, killed a thousand. David killed 10,000. Saul started getting jealous. <laughs> and the rest is history. I mean, he gave, he harassed David all the time. David had to flee. And actually, Saul's son, Jonathan, helped David in, in, in protecting him. He didn't betray his father. But he did help David to be safe. Um, so, so here we have a first of the ones that I have image that God wanted a shepherd, that God has this special affinity towards the role of a pastor, of a shepherd. Yeah. Uh, then it is Isaiah. Um, I say it pretty much. And I'm going to mention this because I'm going to talk a lot, but I might talk about it a little bit. We have this image that the prophets tell the future. And in truth, most of them didn't. Isaiah did. Isaiah actually talked about Jesus, his birth, his life, and his death about 500 before, years before. So he did project the future. Most of the prophets, what they did is if you do this, this will happen. They did it, and it happened. But it wasn't, no, it's, it's like like us parents. If you come too late at night, some you might get assaulted. You might get held up. You might get beat up. And they came late, they got assaulted, they got beat up or something. <laughs> it, it just happens. Our parents are our prophets, if you will. Okay? Um, so, um, in, in Isaiah 11, it's actually 11th, uh, 1 through 16. It says, A spirit of wisdom and of understanding 
and a spirit of counsel and of strength a spirit of knowledge and a fear of the Lord and a delight shall be the fear of the Lord and he's talking about the birth of Jesus he said uh, in the beginning he said but a shoot shall sprout from the stump of Jesse and from the, his root a bud shall, blue, uh, shall blossom the spirit of the Lord shall rest upon him and who is that? Jesus. He's saying what Jesus is going to be like. Then later on he says, and I, I, you've heard the I Have a Dream uh, uh, speech of Martin Luther King, that the black will be together with the white, that the poor will be together with the rich, that the male and female will work together. You know, he's talking about unity. I'm 99% sure that he used this particular piece of the book of Isaiah to talk about that dream. Then the wolf shall be a guest of the lamb, and the leopard shall lie down with the young goat, and the calf and the young lion shall um, browse together with the little child guide to guide them. The cow and the bear shall graze together. Their young shall lie down. The lion shall eat hay like the ox. The baby shall play by the vipers. Then and the child uh, and the child lay his hands on the uh, on the adler's lair. They shall not harm or destroy on all my holy mountain. For the earth, for the earth shall be filled with knowledge of the Lord, as water covers the sea. Who is going to fill the earth with the knowledge of the Lord? Spirit. We are. We have to be guided by the Spirit. But that's our job. Us pastors, you probably have kids. You probably have a ministry. You probably do something in church. You probably do something somewhere. You probably have people working with you or for you. It's our job to be guided by the Holy Spirit so we can go out. And actually, look at that. that, that, that day when before Jesus ascended into heaven, Ten days before Pentecost. What did he say? Go to all the world and make disciples. And baptize them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. And teach them everything that I have commanded you. And know that I am with you every day until the end of history. Until the end of the world. So God is here. And he stayed here with us in the Eucharist. He stayed here with us in the Holy Spirit. Ten days later, the Holy Spirit descended upon the apostles. And, and, and they started preaching and the church started working. The church started being operational. A lot of people say the Pentecost is the birthday of the church. I really think it's the Last Supper, but that's just me. Because in the Last Supper, he instituted Holy Eucharist. This is my body. This is my blood. And actually, the day he resurrected... He showed up in the in the cemetery, in the upper room, and gave them the, the the responsibility, the capacity, the faculty to forgive the sins, so that people can go take communion the correct way. Um, um, they can go receive communion uh, without sin. So he established before everybody starts doing communion, he establishes the sacrament of reconciliation. And that same day, he walks with the apostles to Emmaus. I always say it's a couple, a married couple, Cleophas and his wife. Mary of Cleophas happened to be with Mary, uh, the, mother, uh, the mother of Jesus, and Mary Magdalene under the cross next to John. So I believe it's Mary of Cleophas and Cleophas going back home all frustrated because they killed their Lord. Now they have all their hopes. Then this man just goes and explains how in him all the scripture and all the law and all the prophecies were fulfilled and they got to recognize them in the breaking of bread. Weren't our hearts burning when we explained the scripture to us? Our, our hearts, do our hearts burn when somebody explains scripture to us? Are we really committed to understanding, to living that scripture? And, and, and that's how the Lord is restoring the church. 
as he ascends into heaven, go to all the world and make disciples. Ten days later, the church starts operational. And actually in Acts 2, 42, until the end, the church is gathering already. They gathered together for the teachings of the apostles, to the breaking of the bread. They Nobody had any specific needs because they all collaborated. They all worked together. People would sell what they had to help those in need. They had dinner together in their homes. They broke bread. Marvel, marvelous things were happening amongst them. And the Lord integrated into the community those who are to be saved. There's a lot of people who are not in the community who are to be saved. Are we working on integrating them into the community? Are we taking care of our sheep? Are we taking care of our lambs? That's our job. We have to imitate Jesus, who was the lamb, the, the shepherd, if you will. In Ezekiel, uh, actually, Last Sunday's first reading. For thus says the Lord, Look, I myself will search for my sheep and examine them. As a shepherd examines his flock, while he himself is among his scattered sheep, so will I ex examine my sheep. I will deliver them from every place where they were scattered on the day of darkness clouds. We got scattered. We're still scattered. We have to come together. We have to be actually John 17. If you look at Jesus' prayer before he got he got um, taken to be crucified in, in the first three gospels I, Lord, if it's possible free me from this cup. But here he says, Lord, may they be one like you and I are one. That the world may believe. The world will not believe as we continue to be scattered. We need unity. We need togetherness. We need to experience love. And love is best experienced through service. Through concern. Through care. And that's the shepherd in us. We have to take care of the sheep that the Lord has given us to take care of. We all have a flock. We all are called to take care of the flock. And, and he says, I myself was pa will, will pasture my sheep. I myself will give them rest. And later on, on 17, he said, As for you, my flock, thus says the Lord. Thus says the Lord God. I will judge between one sheep and another, between rams and goats. And we can go, which I don't have here, to Matthew 25, where the Lord will gather everybody at the end of times. We will separate them like the good shepherd separates the sheep from the, from the goats. And will tell the people to his right, which are the sheep. Come, my faithful servant, because you inherited the kingdom of heaven. Because I was hungry and you fed me. I was thirsty and you gave me the drink. I was a uh, refuge and, and you res res rescued me. I, I was shipwrecked and you rescued me. I I, I, um, I was sick and you healed me, etc., etc. And they will ask, when did we do that to you? Every time you did it to one of my little ones, you did it to me. And the uh, ones on the left, they will say, you will not be going to heaven. Because I was hungry, I was thirsty, I was shipwrecked, I was sick, I was in prison, and you didn't take care of me. But when did you see us in that condition? When did we see you in that condition? Every time you did not do it with one of my little ones, you didn't do it with me. So we are called to gather the sheep. We are called to bring them all together. We are called to serve. We are called to love regardless of what kind of people they are. We are called to serve, to help restore, 
those emotional, those mental, those spiritual illnesses through witness, through service, through preaching. And we always have to remember what the, the quote that's always given to St. Francis. Let's go preach the gospel and speak only if you must. It's by what we do that the people are convinced. It's by how we love that we attract people to God. Because we don't love for our sake. We love for his sake. We don't know how to love. We love his way. Yeah. And, and, and Psalm 23. What better psalm? The Lord is my shepherd. There is nothing I shall lack. In green pastures he makes me lie down. To still waters he leads me. He restores my soul. He guides me along right paths. And for the sake of his name. For the sake of his name, he makes sure that I'm doing the right thing. Because if I don't do the right thing, I won't be witnessing. I will be scattering. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadows of death, I will fear no evil. For you are with me. Your rod and your staff comfort me. I kind of find that interesting. Um, rod and a staff. One of them is a cane and the other one's a walking stick. And when, when, when you're pastoring, the, the sheep might kind of divert and you with the stick kind of push them on. Not that way. Not that way. Not that way. And when one goes a little bit too far, the cane has a little hook, right? You grab that little hook and grab it. Hey, come on. Nah, 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 you're going too far. Then <laughs> you bring them over. He takes care of us. He makes sure that we're on the right path. A few years ago, before I retired, my last year at Putnam, I broke my rear left leg. I had the ankle. No good. Didn't work. Had to restore it. When I went back to work, I still had crutches. And I thought about that song a whole lot. I <laughs> didn't even grasp. Come on, getting lighter. I didn't do it, but I thought about it. I have to admit. Mm -hmm. <laughs> You set the table before me in front of my enemies. You anoint my head with oils. My cup overflows. Indeed, goodness and mercy will pursue me all the days of my life. I will dwell in the house of the Lord for endless days. I cannot stop working. I cannot stop serving. I cannot stop loving and the love that comes out of my heart needs to be the love that comes to me from God not the like that comes from people yes I appreciate the like and I will like but I take it a step further with the concept of love love covers a multitude of sins And Luke 2, 4 through 37. I think, I think I have less than that, but I think it's 4 through 20. But. And Joseph, too, went from Galilee to the town of Nazareth of Judea, to the city of David, that is called Bethlehem, because he was of the house of the family of David. So Joseph went to where David was born, because Mary was born there. He was of that, he was of that house. And he had to go register for the census. And he went with Mary to give birth. He didn't go to give birth. He, had, he just happened to be, he happened to be pregnant. And that's the way God organized it. Now, as she goes in and they can't find a home, they can't find a place that will receive them, um, they keep on looking and they end up being in a manger in, in a little cave where lambs were taken care of okay a home of lambs now there were shepherds in that region living in the fields and keeping the night watch over their flock the, 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 the Lord was born 
born, Lord was born in that little cave, on that little manger, in that little uh, crush, if you will. And the first people that found out, the angels went to them and said, Do not be afraid, for behold, I proclaim to you good news of great joy that will be for all the people for today. In the city of David, a Savior has been born for you who is the Messiah, the Lord. The Lord Jesus, the Messiah, came to us. And the first people who knew about it were shepherds. We have to be that humble. We have to be that kind of servant. We have to do what the shepherds do. We have to take care of the flock. We have to focus on the Lord. They were afraid. These angels were overpowering. And they humbled themselves and said, Go. And, uh, and this will be a sign. You will find an infant wrapped in a swaddling clothes and lying in the manger. The shepherds said to one another, Let us go then to Bethlehem to see this thing that was taking place which the Lord has made us to know. They acknowledge that the Lord gave them that information for a reason. See, I, on the other hand, you go to Herod's house. Herod heard the rumor that, that the Lord was going to be born. Yeah, yeah. And he saw, heard about the the, 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 the mad guy. He called him in. Go and find out about this guy. <laughs> and let me know so I can go give him worship. That was the first line. <laughs> I gotta got get rid of this guy. He's gonna take my kingdom away from me. <laughs> Herod did not do what the shepherds did. Herod sent out the kings, the Magi, but he wasn't intending to go worship him, but to go kill him. The Magi went in a whole different route. They didn't come back to tell Herod where the Lord was. Because they were told in dreams, go take a different direction, get out of here as soon as possible. That's the dichotomy that we have. Do we do what the Lord wants us to do? Do we go worship the Lord our God? Or do we worship the material stuff <laughs> that is available to us? The career, the money, the comfort, the parties, the casinos. Whatever the vac it doesn't even have to be gambling. The vacation. I went. I, I have a, I have a very good friend who I love dearly. He, when I came to Massachusetts to stay here for the first time, in his I I, I, I discovered his parish had a mass in Spanish, so I went to that mass in Spanish, and that became my church every time Tito would send me to Massachusetts. If I was here on a Sunday, I would go to St. Leo's in Lemonster because it's the church that I knew. I knew there was a mass in Spanish. I already knew the people. The people every time I showed up were surprised. I brought my mandolin and I would play the, with the music ministry. You name it. That guy was a top leader of that marriage. He was a great servant of the Lord. All of a sudden he found himself a camper. <laughs> and every weekend he'd go camping in the summers. And he made sure that he went to mass wherever he was camping. But he wasn't congregating with the people. It was just checking out. I went to Mass today. Next Sunday, I was in another campsite. I was check out. I went to Mass that Sunday. His kids stopped becoming part of the youth groups. And most of his kids stopped going to church. You have to continue. You have to congregate. Yes, it's good to have a little bit of fun. Yes, it's good to go camping. It's better to go camping with your church community. You have to serve the Lord. It's not, a, not all about fun. Sometimes service you do is fun. And we go that way. So the shepherds went to see the Lord. And they rejoiced in His presence. They rejoiced in the fact that Jesus, the Lord, the Savior, was born amongst us in a manger. They didn't, they didn't see the Lord born in an unaccessible kingdom, in, in a throne 
that, that would be gold with emeralds on it, whatever. No, no. We can approach this, this book. We can talk to him. He's simple. His parents, look at that. Joseph, Mary, very good people. They're humble. They welcomed us. They gave us something to eat while we were there. They sang with us. They were taking care of our Lord. The Lord that was announced by the angels. We are called to be shepherds. <coughs> that we may listen to the angels say, do not be afraid. For today has born the Messiah. The Messiah is just going someplace. <laughs> the Lord is just going. I am so happy he came and picked up the, the, the communion. Because we witnessed the Lord going to somebody's house. And that's beautiful. You can lean on. Here's an angel. Here's another one. Who also goes into the tabernacle and picks up communion to distribute. And many of us, you don't have to be a deacon, you don't have to be clergy. It's our job to take Jesus to other places as we are appropriately formed and installed to be extraordinary ministers of the Holy Communion. We're taking the Lord to places. And if we can't take the Lord physically in the form of the Holy Communion, we take him with words, we take him with witness, we take him with testimony, we take him with show of love. We take the Lord wherever we go just by being children of the Lord. Once we are baptized, we are baptized, we're anointed right over here, right over here, priest, prophet, and king with that holy chrism. That holy chrism is also used to ordain priests. That holy chrism is used to make sure that the bishop is ordained also. There's the three different oils. The oil that catechism is used for baptism, the chrism used for other sacraments, and then there's the oil of the anointment, the oil of the infirmary, that is used by clergy, by priests. I'm clergy, but I can't do it. The priests go visit the sick. Why can't I do it? Because the anointment of the sick includes reconciliation, and I'm not allowed to confess. I gotta tell you a story. One day we were having dinner in my house, the whole family. My older son said, Dad, if the Pope allowed priests to get married, would you continue your studies to become a priest? Now, the first time in my life that I saw a sign of jealousy from my wife, my wife literally stood up and goes to my son and says, do you think I'm going to let this man confess beautiful young women? No way. <laughs> <laughs> it, was, it, was, it was beautiful. It was, it was beautiful. <laughs> and all I could say is, I guess not. <laughs> so, the, the, the anointment of the sick includes reconciliation. And that's why we do the anointment, because the person might die. Might not. Some people are afraid of the anointment of the sick. They think, once I get anointed, I'm going to die. Uh, just newsflash. I'm still kicking, and I've been anointed five times. <laughs> Believe it or not, I'm not dead. Boy. Yeah, yeah. yeah. When it used to be called extreme unction. Extreme unction. Yeah. Extreme unction. Yeah. Yeah. I, I'm still kicking, believe it or not. I might look dead sometimes. I mean, uh, I'm, I'm aging, but I'm aging with glamour. <laughs> I think. <laughs> so, the shepherds returned home glorifying and praising God for all they had heard, seen, just as it, just as it had been told to them. They went from their they abandoned their sheep for a little bit. They went to see the Lord. We have to abandon our sheep sometimes for our own growth. That's why you're here. Some of you might have something going on in your house. I, I have something going on in my house. I have I have this. I have this now. I'm gonna to go to a meeting to deal with the, the Hispanic ministry calendar from 1 to 2 30. And at 4 o'clock, I got a meeting with a couple that's getting married. I just need their signatures, all the paperwork and stuff. And I'm going to get them married on the 15th, which is happens to be my hour 50th anniversary. 
So I'm going to be getting somebody in the same trouble I got into 50 years ago. <laughs> <laughs> and it's a blessing. Finally, John 10. Jesus said again, Amen, Amen, I say to you, I am the gate for the sheep. Jesus is that gate. Jesus keeps us safe. I am the gate. Whoever enters through me will be saved and will come to in and go out and find pasture. I remember an image. Actually, if you look at the book of Nehemiah, uh, Ezra asked permission to rebuild the temple. Uh, when, uh, when, they had, when they were freed from Babylon and Syria was in charge, Ezra rebuilt the chapel, the, 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 the temple, and Nehemiah built the walls of Jerusalem. And we have to build that wall so that we can come in through Jesus, be formed, strengthens ourselves, eat of Christ through the Word, through the Eucharist, through the sacraments. But we have to be ready to go out and bring people in. We have to extend the kingdom of God. That's what we're all about. I came so that they might have life and have it abundantly. We need to have abundant life. That doesn't mean many, many, many years of life. It means a high quality of life in Christ that we're looking for. I am the good shepherd, he says, and the good shepherd lays down his life for his sheep. We are shepherds, and we have to take care of our sheep too. I am the good shepherd, and I know mine, and mine know me. We know him. And that's what we're called to. Just as the Father knows me, I know the Father, and I will lay down my life for the sheep. That's why God decided to tell the angels, go tell the shepherds that they're Messiah. We all, in our way, are shepherds. We all have to take care of the sheep that God assigned to us. My first sheep is my wife. I am my wife's first sheep. Our first sheep are our children and our grandchildren. Our parish. We have to serve in our parish. In my job, I have to serve in the diocese. That's the way the church grows. Let us, as the good shepherds that were taken of the care of their sheep in Nazareth, in Bethlehem, let us go worship the Lord. Right across this curtain, the Lord waits for us every day, at least every Sunday. Let's go strengthen ourselves with the Eucharist. Let's go strengthen our soul with prayer. Let's go smile because of the presence of the Lord. And I'm going to